Nine months ago, I made a YouTube video titled The Journey of Building a One Million Dollar App. And as you can see, we have crossed 1.1 mil. I built Posted just over a year ago, and we're now actively doing over $100,000 per month in volume. I just wanna make it very, very clear that I am not some special kid, I'm not super smart, I don't have all these crazy skills, I'm just dedicated and I follow a proven system that has allowed me to build mobile apps like this time and time again. This video is gonna be broken down into 10 different parts, and I'm gonna show absolutely everything I know about building a successful app. Let's get into it. Just before we start to show you again here, I'll show you on the big screen, we can refresh. And as you can see, we have done over $1.1 million in sales. And this month has been our best month ever at 150K so far. The month's not over. <laughs> and look, I have absolutely nothing to sell you in this video. I'm just going to show you exactly how I build successful apps so that you can do the same. So why should you build a mobile app? And that is because you can build a mobile app one time and it is on the store forever. It will generate you recurring revenue consistently without you needing to do work. My previous app, Puff Count, I built that, made some updates to it, and then it stayed the same for over a year while I simply marketed the business and continued to grow it. Now, my app that we're talking about today is Posted. It is a two-sided marketplace connecting brands and creators. So while I sleep, the creators are joining, finding campaigns from the brands, creating content for those campaigns, and the brands are paying for it, and we collect a fee. And all of this happens while I sleep. That is leverage. On top of that, mobile apps have unlimited scale. Your potential customer base, everybody with an iPhone, billions and billions of people. So you can build the app one time, it'll stay on the store, and you have the potential to market this to billions of people. There is no other business model in the world that has scale like this. And on top of that, with the new AI tools and access to top talent around the world, you do not need a massive team to build a successful mobile app. You do not need to raise money. You do not need to go to VCs and get capital to build a successful mobile app. You simply don't anymore. Now let's move on to finding and validating the idea. Posted was built out of extreme pain that I was experiencing. When I was scaling my last app puff count to 44K per month, I was posting the TikToks myself from my apartment. But eventually I got burnt out on doing that. I couldn't keep up with the amount of content that we needed so I tried to hire creators and that process was an absolute nightmare. The thought came to me, why isn't there a platform where I can make creators compete for my brand? I'm willing to put up money for content, but why can't I make the creators compete to get the best content for my brand? And that was the seed that Posted was born from. And I knew that there were already competitors out there making tons of money. For example, if you type in UGC content, there are so many brands out here and a lot of these brands are massive. They're absolutely massive and they're getting tons of traffic and they're making tons of money. Also, look at this. Google Trends is something that you should be using. Look at the term UGC content up and to the right. It's almost at an all time high right now. So I solved the problem for myself. I know that competitors are already making tons of money doing this. And that might bring you to the conclusion that the market is saturated. People talk to me all the time and they're like, my idea is saturated. Someone already built it. And they get discouraged from building something because of that. The competition does not matter if your market is large enough. There are so many consumers out there. There are so many buyers out there who have no idea your competition even exists. So don't let saturation be the reason that you don't build something. Because all you need to do is do it in a unique way. Okay, building the MVP, how did we do it? And this is the most important part. You wanna build quickly and you wanna build cost effectively so you can get your products out there into the market, start getting users and start generating revenue so that you can build the rest of the features. You don't have to build some super complex app for the MVP, do not do that because you'll waste your time and you'll waste your money. You only need one core feature to launch with. I like to start design first and then we develop. I'm a visual guy. These are the OG sketches from like 2021. I was in a Starbucks sketching these out and I still have the notebook. So I sketched out exactly what every single page should look like in the app, right? Then I went to 99designs and I ran a UI design contest where I would get 50, 60, 70 different designers to all compete to get the winning UI based off my sketches. And then once our 99designs contest was over, I moved all of the designs into Figma. The designer who won that 99 designs contest gave me a Figma file and we simply uploaded everything into Figma. Now Figma was our blueprint. I could lay out all the app screens like I did with the sketches, except for they were more high fidelity now. And I could map out exactly how the app should function as well. So boom, we've just gone now from a sketch, just an idea in our brains to a fully designed UI on Figma. And then how do we build the MVP? How do we actually build the app? 
Well, we used an AI no-code builder called Flutterflow. This is how we built the MVP. It's drag and drop, like you would build a Shopify store. I wanna make it very clear that the first version of Posted was very ugly, it was very clunky, it was full of bugs, but we launched anyway. Because as a seasoned founder, I know that it's more important to launch quickly and get feedback and validate the idea as opposed to just getting caught in this endless building cycle where I'm trying to perfect the product. The product was never going to be perfect and I knew that, especially in the first version. Wow, and here it is. As you can see, edited about a year ago. So we built the MVP on Flutterflow and then we shifted over uh, to a custom React native build. But here is the original product and it looked so bad. <laughs> I'm telling you, just get the first version out there. This is how we validated demand. And the beautiful thing about Flutterflow is you can reuse a lot of this code and build it in a better way, either with Flutter or React Native or whatever it may be. Um, but this was the first version. And the great thing about Flutterflow is I was able to make changes and you can push those changes directly to the App Store. Um, so Flutterflow is a great option if you wanna use an AI no-code builder to build your first MVP of your mobile app. So we built V1 with Flutterflow. And eventually it got to a big enough scale where we said, hey, we're gonna rework this. And we rebuilt the entire app and React and React Native respectfully. Build fast and scrappy first, and then you can polish everything later. So I've used Upwork a lot to hire developers to help me build projects. And I've hired over 100 people on Upwork. I've spent over $40,000 on Upwork. It is the go-to place to hire freelancers. Now, when I'm looking for talent on Upwork, I always look for talent from Eastern Europe when it comes to building mobile applications, when it comes to building software. The quality of the code is good and the cost is lower than it would be natively in the US. I also look for high money earned on their profile and I look for a high job success rate. Now, another thing to mention is I don't pay hourly. When I'm first building an app and first working with someone, I like to work on a milestone basis. This means the developer has to deliver something to me before they get paid. And you can do it in milestones, right? So they need to deliver the first version of the onboarding or whatever it may be. And they have to show me something tangible before I pay them. If you pay a developer that you haven't worked with before hourly, they could burn you and they could just waste a bunch of time, right? And take forever to build the product. You want to incentivize them to build quickly and build well. They deliver each milestone to me, a tangible milestone. I test it and then the payment is released. And every dev that applies to my job on Upwork, I speak with them. I have a 15 minute call with these developers. I like to suss out their vibe. Are they professional? Are they on camera? Do they have ideas about my product? Do they feel invested in working with me? That is the most important part. And now the team that I work with, I've been working with them for over a year now. They were all freelancers at the start, but now they're like my family and I trust them with everything. Okay, now let's cover the onboarding. The onboarding is the most important part of your app. It is the user's first experience with your app. So you need to prime the user to be ready for your product or ready for your paywall. You need to educate, qualify, activate, and prime your users. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that in the posted onboarding. Now, our onboarding is very clean and we use screen design all the time to look at top tier onboardings. This is how I learned to build strong onboardings. If you look at any successful mobile app in the store right now, I bet you they have an extensive onboarding where they're gathering data, they're educating their users, and they're priming them for the paywall. And that is exactly what you need to do. Here's what we do in the posted onboarding. First, we have the value screens. Welcome to Posted, reaffirming their, their decision to download our app, showing them the features. We have a nice little welcome video here. Then we gather information about them, they connect their account, finish their profile, and then boom, social proof, and we always ask them to rate in the onboarding. So we've showed the creators all the features in our mobile app, we've educated them, we've shown them social proof to qualify them, we have activated them by making them connect their accounts, grabbing their contact information so we can hit them up later if we need to and we have primed them to be ready to use our application and hit our primary KPI, which is creating the first piece of content and getting that first cash out. Now, let's talk marketing, because yes, we built a beautiful product, but if no one knew about it, we wouldn't make any money, but we've made $1.1 million so far, and that is because we crush it at marketing. And in the beginning, we didn't spend any money to market this. Posted was marketed strictly organically, $0 in paid ad spend for six months. So. With the marketing, we need to start organic first and then we can scale those winners on paid ads. Now look, marketing is 95% of the success of any app. Anybody can build an app nowadays. Marketing is the true moat. Now, the easiest channels to get your product out there are TikTok and Instagram Reels. When I first launched my previous mobile app, PuffCount, 
I didn't make any money in the first six months of that app because I didn't know how to market yet. But I sat in my apartment and I committed to making one TikTok video every single day. And that taught me the skill of marketing. I got better and better and better until my content was crushing. I was consistently getting 50 to 100,000 views per video without paying a single dollar on paid ads. And the truth is, as an early stage founder, as a late stage founder, it doesn't matter what stage you're at. Organic TikTok and Instagram are the best way to market a mobile app right now, full stop. And the only thing you need to be successful with short form content marketing for your mobile app is market research. That's it. You simply type in the keywords related to your product, look for the most viral videos, and you can recreate those. That is it. And I also want to make something else very clear. When you are marketing organically, your content cannot feel like an ad. It needs to feel like entertainment. This was one video that I posted for my previous app that absolutely crushed it. at 500,000 organic likes, over 8 million views. In this video, I'm taking apart a vape, showing people what's inside, and then pitching my product at the end. I'm hitting on the pain points of how dangerous it is to use these things, and then I am presenting the solution, my app, at the end. It's an entertaining piece of content, very shareable, and I'm pitching my product at the end. This video absolutely crushed it for me, and use this strategy when you're marketing your own apps. So if you follow that simple marketing strategy of doing market research, first understanding and digesting the winning content and then creating your own content or hiring creators to do it or whatever, you will have a library of winning organic pieces of content. And then you simply take those winners and you scale them on paid ads. And again, I wanna reiterate that you can also go to the Facebook ads library and you can type in any product out there. For example, Duolingo. And I can see exactly what they're running on paid ads. Here are all 150 of the paid ads that they are running right now. They are not spending money on these ads because they're not profitable. This is, this is a cheat code. You can see all of the ads that your competitors are running right now today. Do with that what you will. Okay, now let's talk monetization because this is where most apps fail. You've designed your app, you've built your app, you're marketing your app, you're getting in customers. Now, how do we turn those customers into revenue? So here's the strategies that I've used to monetize all of my apps. First, when I was building little games, I used ads. And those were great because people were on the app for a long period of time. They were doing a bunch in the app. They were playing multiple games over and over, but ads don't really work for tool-based apps like PuffCount and now Posted. People aren't in the app long enough and you don't wanna interrupt their experience with a banner ad when the user's just trying to get something done, like track their puffs or get a piece of content. So now we use a free to download hard paywall model. And here's exactly how that works. And I'm gonna show you PuffCount as an example because I know not everybody's building a two-sided marketplace like Posted. And what you'll notice, very similar onboarding to what we have in Posted, welcome, value screen, social proof, a survey, and then boom, we have the paywall. A hard paywall making the users commit to a three-day free trial. So again, the app is completely free to install. We're showing the users what they're gonna get inside of the app. We're walking them through a survey to remind them of the problem that they need to solve, remind them of their pain points, and then they hit the hard paywall. We're priming the users through the onboarding to want to pay for our product. Now, how do you price your subscription? Well, the most important thing is A-B testing. You need to test various different price points to figure out what your highest LTV is. This is something called Bayesian analysis because you could charge someone a lower price point and yes, you might get more conversions at that lower price point, but on the flip side, you can charge people a lot more and you only need one person to convert to make up for four people on the lower price point. There's gonna be some sweet spot in the middle and you need to relentlessly A-B test your pricing. You can use tools like Superwall or like Amplitude or Revenue Cat or a suite of other different tools to A-B test your different pricings. So if you're building a mobile app today, this is the play in terms of monetization. Free app, smart onboarding, hard paywall, subscriptions, and aggressive A-B testing. And to wrap things up, we're gonna go through the must-have tech stack to build any mobile app like PuffCount or like Posted. You absolutely need Figma, which is gonna be your design system. You need 99 designs to run a design contest, Flutter to build the MVP, Upwork to hire talented developers, Stripe for payments, Amplitude for in-app analytics, and Posted, of course, to market your product. And if you want this document and you want the link to all these tools, I'm gonna be dropping this document for free to download in the description, so go check that out. Now, this video was just an overview of what my process looks like, but, I also recorded a full 45 minute guide where I deep dive into each individual stage of app building and scaling. So click here to give it a watch. And as always, if you got value from this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. It keeps me motivated to make videos just like these. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.